Welcome back everybody to another edition of North Coast Craftsman. My name is Dalton. Now today's video is a little bit emotional for my family and I. You see, it all starts right here with this buffalo skull. Way back in the day, my grandfather bought this buffalo right here and she had a calf. One night in the summer, we had a thunderstorm and we ended up waking up the next day to find this buffalo and her calf had both been struck by lightning. The buffalo is gone, my grandfather has now passed on, and so has many other things that once called our family farm home. The barn where the buffalo sheltered is now tore down. The pasture where the buffalo used to graze is now gone. Now all we have left is this skull. And so what I was thinking, I would take that skull, some old barn board that was salvaged off the barn, and some barbed wire from the fence that pastured our animals. And create a memorial in my grandpa's honor that can be passed down from generation to generation throughout the years. So guys, with that being said, let's get started. The whole project starts right here where I cut four boards at just under 24 inches and then we'll begin the glue up process to make the backing. Now this step here is basically just your simple panel glue up, not real intricate, not real hard. I usually just spread glue on one edge, put the other edge down, and now I squeeze everything together just so that it's snug. And then now at this point, I will start adding my clamping calls so that I make sure that everything stays straight and flat. This is a great pro tip for big, large panel glue ups. If you don't do this, you have a big tendency for your panel to warp once it comes out of the clamps. Or if you do it this way, you have a much better chance of keeping that panel flat and true. After all of your calls get put on, then you're going to want to go back through and make sure every clamp is tight. Now the fun stuff begins. It's time to chisel off the glue drips as well as start sanding. So the plan for the backing for this is going to be to burn it. So I'm only going to sand up to 120 grit. There's no need to go any further than that. So basically all I'm worried about is taking away most of the rough edges as well as getting all of the glue that may be in the cracks or the seams. Once all the glue has been sanded off, it is now time to get out your torch and start the burning process. So this part is fairly easy. The only thing that you really have to worry about is making sure you don't hover over any one spot. Because if you do, you will end up over torching that area and it's not going to look the same as the rest of the board. Also one other pro tip I just learned is that torches really don't like to be held sideways. So try to hold your piece vertical if possible. One more tip that will be helpful is try to burn both sides evenly. If you don't burn both sides evenly, you will end up with a warped panel. Trust me, I know because I did this. So I ended up having to glue and screw on a couple of brace boards to make it flat again. Now the next step in the process is going to be taking your piece of barn board and cutting it at whatever width you want your frame to be. I chose an inch and three quarters. 
Now because my frame and backing are the exact same width, I chose to Craig screw the frame onto the backing. Now this is a little bit out of the norm, but it will still work. And actually it turned out and worked really well. So now the next step is going to be deciding how long your frame needs to be in order to make your 45s on all four corners. Now this step here is extremely important because if you don't get your 45 degree angles right, you're gonna have gaps in the corners. So what I like to do is measure everything a quarter of an inch long and then cut down to whatever length makes it fit snug and tight in the corners. So now what I end up doing is basically just fitting them up in the corners, making sure they're tight. And at this point, I can use the Craig screws and just screw the frame right to the backing. Also in the middle, if you can see those two pieces, those are the pieces I'm using to keep the panel flat over time. So now I just go through and continue screwing each board on, making sure that my corners have tight seams and adjusting as I go. So now onto the barbed wire portion. This is a super easy thing to do and it really makes your piece stand out. All that I did for this is just place the buffalo skull where I thought it would fit nicely, cut the barbed wire to the length that I wanted and just started stapling it to the actual wood. I chose to put two in the top corner and one down below in the lower corner. So now the piece is ready for some finish. For that, I'm choosing water-based polyurethane. I put three coats on and now the only thing left to do is attach the skull to the frame. For this, I'm attaching a three quarter inch dowel to a block of wood, screwing the block of wood down to the frame and the dowel will stick up into the buffalo skull brainstem. I think this turned out absolutely beautiful. If you guys enjoyed what you saw, give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.